Hey guys, this is Drew with Gucci Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video uh, at the show in Broken Arrow. We've got a table so we can get in early and uh, we found a lot of nice raw stuff today and talked to a few dealers, but uh, let's get this video started. Broken Arrow Coin Show with Mike from Mid America Coins. Okay, Mike, how has the show been for you so far? Uh, I can't complain. It's been a pretty good show. Uh, I've been coming here since the beginning, since they first started this about five years ago. Okay, Mike, how long have you been in the uh, the coin industry, collecting, uh, dealing, what have you? Over forty three years, I've been doing this. Okay, and if people were interested in finding you, selling you their collection. Um, just asking for advice, where would they find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, the web, uh, just type in Mid America Coins, or you can go to uh, our website once you get there. Uh, and we do have an email address, you can send us an email, Mid America Coins at live.com. Uh, there's several different ways, or you can even go on YouTube. I'm sure somebody will have my information up there. We do a lot of different YouTube. Uh, Info commercials with different guys. What's uh, what's your phone number if they wanted to call you? Uh, area code nine one eight seven eight seven two six four six. Okay. And do you guys have a public showroom for people to come and look at your inventory? We do. We have about sixteen showcases full, filled with coins. And usually we tell people if you don't see what you want in there, maybe ask us. We have a thirty by twelve walk-in vault filled with coins from years back. Okay, and if somebody wanted to visit your, your physical store, would it be a by appointment only, or is there just a standard set of hours? Uh, we have a standard set of hours. Uh, we welcome all people to come in. We just uh, at, please uh, respect our facility when you do come in. Uh, we are located at uh, 9 East 3rd Street, Grove, Oklahoma. Okay. And it's my understanding that you guys are putting on a an Oklahoma coin show in Grove, Oklahoma. Can you give us some details on that? Uh, yes, we are. This is our third annual. This will be our third show, uh, coin show, and uh, this is the home for the meet and greet of the YouTube world out there. Our, you know, basically we got a big group coming in from California, New York, Montana, Wisconsin, Michigan. There'll be dealers from all over, YouTube dealers, that'll be there. So you get a chance to come back and meet your favorite YouTube star. Okay. And if somebody was wanting to go and, and sell coins there as a dealer, what, what prices are they looking at for tables and etc.? Uh, tables are running around $160 a table. Uh, like, like I said, there's going to be everything there, world coins, U.S. coins. We're even going to have ball card dealers there, gym dealers there. So there's going to be a lot to look at. Um, and uh, the gym dealers are the last add-on, so you don't see them on my flyer. But we had a few of them reach out to us, and one of them happens to be a YouTuber themselves. And we said, yes, you're welcome. We'd, we'd love to have you there. And if they're a dealer, do they get uh, breakfast, uh, lunch, what, what, what amenities we, we do they We offer get? a free breakfast to the dealers. My wife makes a really good homemade biscuit and gravy. Uh, for the people that cannot eat that stuff, we are doing fried eggs and bacon for them. Okay, absolutely. Thank you for your time, we appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you at the Grove, Oklahoma Coin Show. Thank you, I appreciate it too. All right, so just got home from Broken Arrow, and the show was really good. Day two, we got a lot of raw stuff in. We got a few uh, commemoratives in. Uh, we had a few more interviews as well. Didn't have as much to spend on day two just because of all the opportunities on day one, but we have a lot, like I said, a lot of raw coins to share with you. And uh, like I said, when we were talking about the previous video, we really do want you guys to show up to the Broken Arrow show when you can. Uh, the next one is in a few months. And uh, it's just a really great time to meet a lot of great dealers, uh, buy a lot of nice coins, and it's a pretty nice Boris floor, uh, great location. But let's get into showing you guys some of these coins. 
Uh, it'll be pretty nice to share all these raw PCs that we picked up. I really like them a lot, but yeah, let's take a look. Alrighty, so crazy second day here as you can see. Bought a lot of raw stuff, bought a few graded stuff, but let's start on the raw stuff here. This is an 1865 two cent uh, piece. It's got that wood grainy feel to the coin. Might just be toning, but still pretty unique piece here. Like that stuff, especially when it's raw. Just get to offer it kind of at a nice little premium there, but also nothing too crazy in terms of price. Here's an 1854O uh, arrows, seated half dollar. Like to buy the ones that are really New Orleans mints and have arrows and rays, just because I don't know. I, I just like uh, just the added characteristics of a coin. That one's pretty low grade, but we do have a few better ones at our shop, KushaCollectibles.com. Nice chocolatey half cent here, 1828. Uh, you know, nothing really distracting on the coin, no uh, no scratches or anything really filled in. Really strong half cent though, very happy about this one as well. Got a few uh, affordable barbers this weekend that I liked. This is 1896-0 uh, Barber Quarter, graded, uh, not really graded that high actually. I think it would just be like a G or a G6, something like that. But still, uh, you know, something like that I like to just pick up here, knickknacks. Uh, especially when people come on the website and say they've, only really bought a few coins uh, in their past and want to start getting into coins again. Those are a lot of uh, kind of a segue type of coin for those. And here's a 1923 uh, SLQ. I would grade this one AU details, but still uh, gets people in the door, especially when they're trying to build and acquire a set over time. Uh, a nice little early date SLQ for sure. We got a few, a lot of seated stuff today. The first one we're going to show you um, amongst the 1854, um, the 1854 O there, is this 1888 seated dime. Uh, very original, just evenly circulated, um, and so picked up a few of these actually. A lot of them are half dimes, like this one. This one's an 1857 O half dime. Very original surfaces, as you can see. And, you know, just coins that you can't go wrong with, especially when you're building either a seated set or a type set. Um, just a lot of hole fillers as well. Here's one. This is the 1838 Large Stars. Most of the time you see them there without stars, um, but this one has large stars, which I'm pretty excited about. Have a lot of ones with no stars in the shop, but this one did speak to me at the show. Like I said, again, most of the time when I buy raw coins, I'm going to want ones that are, you know, dates are kind of there. A lot of the details are there, and uh, you're not going to find any problems with them. I've been straying away from rim dings and all, all that kind of stuff, just because it's a lot easier to offer them. Here's an 1838-0 uh, cap bust half. I thought this one uh, met a lot of the standards that I have, especially with just offering affordable graded and raw stuff here. Are you guys enjoying today's video? If you guys are, please leave a like. Uh, comment your thoughts about the interviews that we had today. Um, do you guys want to see more interviews? What do you want to see more at the shows? All that's important to us. Um, com you know, comment those thoughts down below. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, check out our Freedom Podcast, Freedom Coin Show Podcast. We would really like you guys to uh, subscribe over there because we're giving out a lot of more information about who we are and uh, what the business is about but let's get back to today's episode um i just think that one's a nice looking coin got a lot of three cent silvers as you can see one two uh three four five six and we got a lot from last show i'm sorry the, the previous day here's the 1858 that we got um this one circulated kind of heavily as well but the dates there all the details that you really want are there as well do like that coin very much here is an 1853. This one has a little bit of cleaning on it, but that's just the way it goes with some of these. And most of these are going to be kind of, you know, correlated with their price. So if you see one on the website that's a little bit more expensive, it's nice and original. And then you see one that's on the website that has a little bit of old cleaning, just know there's a separation, especially in value and in grade. Uh, this one is another, uh, it's 1856-0 seated dime. You can see that this coin has a lot of originality as well. I really do enjoy coins like this. It's just, I don't know. It, it really doesn't make make it hard for you to buy stuff because you're just looking for coins like that. And then when you get them home, you really want to pick them up, start to look at them, and then really enjoy them. And that's kind of the story with a lot of these, especially with this 1858 half dime here. You can see just a really dark, beautiful looking coin. Nothing really bad about it. Oh, man, I just love this coin so much. But 
I really need to start my own set one of these days. What do you guys think? What do you guys think I should start to kind of collect as raw stuff? Because raw stuff has really started to uh, be a really big framework of our channel and also, you know, what we've been picking up in, in terms of collecting. Another one that we've picked up, just almost uh, mirroring that other one that we showed you, the 1858. This one is 1859, three cents silver. Nice, beautiful, original, kind of a little bit of dark toning to it, terminal, but uh, yeah, a lot of guys have been asking about three cent silvers and I stocked up this weekend. A lot of them, a lot of these coins presented themselves um, out of nowhere. Here's 1853, uh, three cent silver, a little bit worn on the obverse, uh, but the date is still present. Most of the details are still there as well. We have an 1852 here. This 1852 has a little kind of toning to it, but just something that separates it from the rest of the pack there. I do just love the intricate design that they have with these. If you guys missed our, our previous episode about uh, three cent silvers that we had, we had a 1850, uh, 1851-0 three cent silver, and it really is an interesting piece because just because of the placement of uh, the mint mark. Here's an 1851 three cent silver. I think we'll have enough just to fill out a whole set here one of these days, but I do like these coins very much. I'm going to go back to a few seated things here, 1857-0 uh, seated dime, and you guys already know the drill here, beautiful, original. I think there might have been a tad of old cleaning on the reverse here to be honest, so just understand that from the get-go, but still, nice New Orleans mint seated dime. Bought this 97. Uh, 97 Indian head scent just because uh, you know a lot of these have been selling on our website especially when they're in better condition you don't want to buy ones that are super worn down you kind of want to buy ones that are almost on the brink of mint state and uh, the guy that sold this to us thought it was high AU and I kind of agreed with them as well not much luster on the coin but the, the details are very strong here's a 1916 Denver that my brother picked up just a better date uh, Walker if you guys are wanting to start a really cheap set these ones are pretty affordable, you know, and a lot of the 1916Ds are going to be condition rarity. Basically what that means is that the real value is going to be in the condition of the coin, not really necessarily the date, but this one is a nice one that he picked up. I'm going to try to get him into buying and selling more. He's really good at working with people and talking with them. Here is an 1853 seated dime with arrows. Um, and you guys can tell again, just very strong dark and uh, original presence on this coin very excited about that one too here's one that has a little bit of old cleaning on it for my best guess but like i said you're going to want to buy ones that are a little bit mid-tier in terms of grade and just the intricate design that they had with these coins really did make me jump out and really start to move into the seated series a lot i really want to add one to the collection one of these days that's a little bit higher grade and also just speaks to me here's the 1859 uh, Indian head scent one that you guys don't see too often a lot of these should be sitting in kind of type sets Just a little bit more difficult of a coin This one has a few rim dings to it, but it's gonna be priced accordingly and that's just the way you kind of have to do it um, But a lot of these there's a kind of a hole I guess in a type set which you guys don't know about or some of you guys might not know about the 1859 kind of has its own little slot so whenever you can pick up a few of these that look nice and chocolatey like this one That's what you really should do because you're going to find someone that really is trying to incorporate into their collection a nice typeset. And the 1859 is a really good uh, start for them. Here is the 1853 Arrows and Rays uh, Seated Quarter. This one has a little bit of old cleaning on it as you guys can tell. Um, but still, I like the Rays part of most of these seated coins just because it really fills up and gives a lot of detail to the reverse. Sometimes I just think there's a lot of open area when it doesn't have Rays, but this one really does look busy and I do like the kind of appeal that it has. Here's a Carson City seated dime. I bought the seated dime because we bought a whole lot of O-mints, we bought a whole lot of P-mints, and then we, we're gonna buy a few Carson Cities, but this one at the show had the most kind of detail to it, and so that's why I wanted to pick it up. Thank you, Robert Redfin, I appreciate this deal. He also sold us a few commemoratives this weekend, so very happy about that. Bought a few more seated half dimes here. Now this one is 1854-0 with arrows. And just, I mean, I like the, I just like how small these coins are. I think it's just pretty cool that we can set aside pieces of history like that and give them kind of a new home and somewhere we can keep them safe. There's just a lot of things that have been happening to them over the years. 
Here's an 1849, um, 1849 seated half dime. Another kind of nice original piece. Pretty worn, but you can just see a lot of the glaring and interesting details about, about the coin. And it's kind of an early date for the seated series, so that's why I wanted to pick that one up in specific. You're going to see a lot of the ones in this episode are from the 50s, but the this one is from 49, which I do like a lot. Um, we have this 1857 seated half dime. Once again, nice, original, beautiful coin. But another two cent here. This one I like because it had just kind of like a chocolatey look to it. Nice, uh, obverse and reverse, and couldn't go wrong with that. A few more barbers. We're gonna try to pick up maybe a few circular ones from Brent next time, or from Trent, I'm sorry. Uh, Brent's our neighbor, we've been talking to him a lot about coins, but Trent, we gotta get with Trent about a few coins because uh, there's been a lot of guys on our website picking up barbers, and it's becoming a really fascinating series for me, especially when we're trying to find a few, just for a few customers and for Trent as well. Uh, here's one of the coolest kind of pickups that are raw. This is a 1914 Denver uh, Lincoln set. I picked this one up because it's a nice hole filler. We did buy a few graded ones, but they did sell pretty quick. So found a nice raw one. It still looks pretty nice. Has a little bit of chocolate to it as well. Can't go wrong with that. Just a nice better date Lincoln set. Here's an 1853 a seated half dollar with arrows and we got the rays on the reverse here. Bought this one at the kind of the, towards the end of the show. Really did jump out to me at the beginning, but sometimes you gotta find the coolest stuff up front and show people and buy it. And so we actually ended up buying a lot of graded stuff the first day, like you saw, and then moved kind of into the raw stuff the second day. But here's a, just a really worn uh, three cent silver that we picked up. You know, we're probably gonna sell most of these pretty cheap or just pass them on to a young numismatist that really needs them. Got a few more barbers here to finish out the raw coins. Got a 1916 uh, barber quarter. Still has some decent details. Still pretty nice and intact. And a 92P. This thing is worn as crap, but I really do like it. But we also picked up a few things just for our collection to set back. I've been setting back a few Mexico pieces. So, you know, a few Mexican uh, ten, 5 and 10 centavos. I just thought they were pretty cool. And so, I don't know, I really like the... The design of most of these just a few knickknacks though to set back and uh, maybe just give a few out one of these days also bought a few kind of washington quarters with some toning a little damage on these but still thought they were pretty cool you know sometimes it's just the cheap thrills of the show but let's move into some graded stuff before we uh finish today's video all right so starting out with the bottom right here nice uh key date mercury dime this is a 1921 denver graded vg10 by PCGS and uh, you know when you get to AG and VG you still have a little bit of detail in the coin but this one still I, I really enjoy it it's a pretty nice and affordable hole filler especially for 21D 21P a lot of those when they start to get XF and all that it just gets way too expensive here's a nice commemorative a New Rochelle I bought this one because of the holder and because of the strong luster on the coin I do enjoy just the design as well very uh, interesting, love the flower there. Uh, but we also bought something that's a little bit, probably the oldest coin that we've ever bought. This is um, uh, a widow's mite. And as you guys can see, it has kind of a, you know, it's a pretty worn coin, but I don't know, I wanted to try something out that was new, interesting, and uh, a little bit biblical. God has really been blessing our business lately and we couldn't be more thankful for that. Got a few more commemoratives here. This one is, um, 1946 Iowa commemorative. Strong luster, no distracting spots on the coin. Do love that eagle, very beautiful. This one is a little bit more common, but it still does give uh, a lot of kind of interest, um, especially when just, you know, a lot of interesting designs are like this that are really affordable still in the commemorative series. So make sure to keep an eye out for those because I'm sure they're gonna be increasing over time. Here's a 1937, um, I do not, I'm not even going to pronounce the name, it's, it's too hard for me, but I bought this coin because I really did like the eye appeal to it. Uh, I think that it's just a beautiful blast white coin, did have the true views, which sometimes is a big plus when you're buying coins, gives someone a little bit more of added value, um, especially to their collection. They get to post those cool photos and share it with their friends. Got another Indian head sent, a little bit of a tougher date here. This one is a 1908S. Uh, Indian Indian head scent 
a little bit darker, but it is in a holder and it is mint state, so can't go wrong with that, especially when uh, people are getting pretty serious about Indian head stents, especially with our client list. Uh, you're you're going to want to keep finding ones that are 1909S or 1908S. So uh, a few little knickknacks here, a few cheap kind of buffaloes, nothing too crazy. Once again, we're going to try to find a few coins for people to get excited about the hobby and not spend too much. We can't forget about people that spend, you know, uh, $25, $50 with us sometimes. Those people matter so much to us. Bought this one from a young numismatist, a young dealer that was at the show. It's 1879 Morgan Dollar grade MS63 proof like by PCGS. Yes, this coin's a little hazy, but I think that's uh, kind of the way that the Philly Mint was, and uh, I think it still has that really nice quality to it. Can't go wrong though with a P Mint uh, proof like. We just see a lot of estimate proof like, so when we can get a Philadelphia proof like in, that's what we try to stride for. Here's one of my favorite commemoratives of the weekend. Got this one from Instagram, from uh, Vams Plus. Isaiah, thank you for this coin. It's just really nicely toned. I do like just the, I don't know, the character that it has to it. Was tempted to keep this one, but we did keep a few other coins instead this week. And we can't wait to share with you guys those on Friday. While we share a new tip about, uh, you know, somewhere you guys should go online to shop for coins because there are a lot of great deals out there. Got a few walkers to end this video. This is a 1943 uh, Walking Liberty half. Got some strong luster on the coin. I think this coin might have been undergraded way back then, but still very strong, beautiful coin. A lot of these are in the 40s today just because I really like the, the appearance that they had. We're trying to stick in the 30s and in the 20s and the teens, but like I said, sometimes you just get sucked right back into these really strong luster and detail coins. Can't go wrong though. I mean, look at this. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind looking at these every single day, even if they didn't sell. I just like the way that they looked, and that sometimes gets you in trouble, but also gets you um, excited about certain pieces. Here's a 1944S. Welcome Liberty Half. Has a little bit of touch of kind of tan, and I don't know, I think it, I thought it was pretty cool. Still has a lot of the luster intact, too, so uh, I do enjoy the little kind of extra character that it has. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Like I said, a whole lot of coins to show you, and we're so thankful that you guys watched until the end. But let's roll it to the outro. Hey, everyone. We are here at the Broken Arrow Coin Show with Mr. Glenn Talbot. Mr. Glenn, do you want to introduce yourself and your security team? Absolutely. I'm Glenn Talbot. I own and operate First Line Security Agency located out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Uh, currently, we are at the Broken Arrow uh, Coin Show. We are providing security for all the vendors and customers that are coming in, and uh, as well as the uh, general Customer. public yep. that are coming in as well. Um, what we do is we're able to walk around, introduce ourselves, communicate with the customers if they need assistance finding something uh, we assist them we also provide uh, security for the vendors as far as watching their uh, product while they're stepping away or while they're doing a transaction um, it's a pretty uh, great experience very great experience very for everybody. safe yeah absolutely uh, so if somebody wanted to reach out to you Glenn and use your service protect uh, what they have, how would they reach out to you? Uh, they can reach me at 918-550-9918, or they can find me on Facebook or on uh, our website, which is firstlinesecurityagency.com. And uh, what, what would you say, Glenn, you specialize in? Uh, we uh, do physical security. So we are um, standing posts, we are walking around, providing, like I said, you know, services that the client provides or needs. Okay. And do you guys have a website as well? We do. That's okay. uh, FirstLineSecurityAgency.com. Okay. And what, what areas do you, uh, I guess, service? Uh, we do all of Oklahoma. Okay. All of Oklahoma. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks, Glenn, for all your help, and we appreciate you protecting us. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts down below on the coins that we share with you, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, you know, we just passed 2,000 subscribers, going on to 3K, excited about that, excited about the podcast, um, just so many great things happening, God is truly blessing us, but we will see you guys in the next episode.